gather this morning in God's presence, let us present ourselves as a vessel to be used of God. Let us consecrate our minds, our thoughts, our being. Let us offer to God this morning a sacrifice of praise. So I'm going to invite everyone this morning to just Present yourself to God this morning as we enter into this time of worship. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning, Jesus. We thank you for your love and we thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you, Jesus, for bringing us into your house this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to stand before you, Lord to worship you. So this morning as we come, Lord, we pray that you will search our hearts, our minds, and our thoughts. Still us, Lord, before you. As we present our bodies, our all that we are before you this morning, Jesus. So God, we pray you will remove every distractions, every sin, every doubt, and every fear this morning. Because, Lord Jesus, there'll be a freedom of worship, Lord Jesus, even as we enter this time of worship. We pray, God, that you will sanctify us, God, consecrate us, God, as we present our bodies, all our voices in worship this morning to you, Lord Jesus. Search our hearts this morning, God. Cleanse us from all our sins this morning, Father. And set us free, God, through your grace and through your mercy this morning. And cause us, Lord Jesus, to worship you, Lord. So we say, take joy, my King. Be free in their house this morning, Jesus, to move amongst their people. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us begin to give God some praise in his house, for he is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to hail the name of Jesus this morning, for he is great and greatly to be praised. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. So we worship you this morning, God. We praise you with our biggest voice this morning. Hallelujah.
So we praise you, big God. We praise you, Jehovah. We praise you, the omnipotent one. We praise you, the omniscient one. We praise you, the omnipotent one, the great high priest, the I am that I am, the one who was and is and is to come.
provided that job sing hallelujah hallelujah sing hallelujah to higher praise hallelujah sing hallelujah
You take the 30 days, whatever situation is up there, whatever thing is going up there, when men say, there's no way to heal you, you've been taking the medication, all that stuff, nothing is helping. The Lord says, Jesus, said, give me your WhatsApp, give me your Facebook. Uh, you have been posting your face, uh, or you have been posting your body. Uh, people are not safe. Uh, but today, uh, the Lord said, give me your social media account. Uh, and put my face there. Put my scripture there. Let people know what I'm doing. And uh, you will see. You will testify. You will see. You will testify. So whatever that thing is, as Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Uh, Jesus is asking you today, when you give whatever you have to give, when you give, if it's your money, if it's your time, if it's your mind, whatever you have to give to him, he said, what do you want him to do for you today? What do you want him to do for you today? What do you want him to do for you today? Whatever the man say, it's not going to happen. Whatever they did say, you are not qualified. Jesus said today, bring it to me. Bring it to me. As he asked Bartimaeus, you say what you want. Jesus will give you what man cannot give to you. So, Father, this morning, you know the deed of your people. You know who that person is who has to give up whatever social media they use to glorify your name. Who has to give up something today as an offering or tie to you so you can receive it and you can multiply it and you can see a mirror catch because Simon had to give up something has to give up his boat uh, so Jesus can use his boat uh, and Jesus used his boat uh, and then the nets went broken. It was a miracle. What do you have to give to Jesus this morning? Oh, you don't have to answer me. You are your Jesus. You cry to Jesus. If anybody in the house, uh, that you, you think whatever is going on with you is impossible for the eyes of man. The message is for you. This prayer for you. You can stand up. You can cry to God. You can cry to God. Oh, Reba City, Father, the Rodobo City. Whatever they say was impossible, Lord. We come to you this morning. Oh, you are God of the impossible. You are God of miracle. Your name is Jehovah. You are no a man. You are God. You are God. You touch. Whatever they told me, there's no time to go fishing now. Whatever they told me, that place, they don't hire people no more. But you say, I will talk to the manager myself. He Oh, immigration, I will talk to immigration myself for you. Oh, Roka Shata. Oh, who, who do you want me to talk to for you? Jesus said, I will talk to them. And you have a divine favor. If you need favor in the house, uh, shout to the Lord. You need favor in the house, uh, shout to the Lord. 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 Because you're going to be to the place uh, that nobody told you can be there. Oh, you talking about your accent? Your accent means nothing. Oh, Rabba Shitya Rabba Baba. Oh, you talking about the color of your skin? That's nothing for God. God will put you where you are not qualified, you are, you are not even supposed to be there, but we put you there because you give up something. If it's your talent, if it's your singing, if it's your drum playing, if whatever it is, if it's your teaching, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Oh, Reba Shita, remember who that person is. Give it your social media account. Give Jesus your, your Facebook. Give Jesus your WhatsApp, whatever it is is up there, the primary one you use, every day, 30 days, keep sending message about Christ. And God will touch you. God will touch you. Father, we come in your house today. Uh, there's so many needs. Uh, oh, Father God, uh, we pray, Father God, for divine touch, that everyone came to you this morning. They will not go back the same way they came this morning. They will go home and they would say, since I went over there, this today, everything will change. Everything will change. Oh, Father God, your name be glorified. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. We're going to pray for the senior pastor, Dr. Trevor Brazel and Maureen, Dr. Maureen Brazel and Trevor there in London. We're going to pray for them. They're over there in the UK. We're going to pray for them for Trevor Mercy that everything to go well. Everything to go well with them and to come back here safely. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. On September 16, we have the Men Healing Night. Oh, there's a man of hope in the house. Men of hope, boots on the ground. Yes, we have some men of hope in the house. We have a Men Healing Night, September 16. You're going to get some more information to follow. We pray, Father God, for your praises. Your presence on that time, Father God. Your presence, Father God, that you talk to us. We're going to cry to you, Father God, this morning. Whatever is your mind at this time, put it on the side. Let's all together cry to God about United States of America. Because you just don't know what the devil is cooking up there. But we have God who answer prayer. We have God who hear our cry. Father, we come to you this morning. Whatever is going on in this country, whatever is going on, every time you turn the TV on, you don't see, we don't hear from you, but we hear from the devil. We hear what the devil is doing. We hear what is going on in the school, in the stadium, everywhere in the government. What the devil are do, is doing, Father God. Have a mercy for this country, Father God. Have a mercy, Father God, for the politician. Have a mercy, Father God, for Tulsa Public School, Father God. Have a mercy for our children in school. There was a young kid in broken out in a middle school who commits suicide. We pray for our children. Whatever is going on over there, we pray, Father God, for your divine protection, Father God. We pray that you be with them. We pray that you be with them, Father God. We pray for miracle. Miracle catch in our children, Father God. Transform those public school, Father God. May pub to those a public school may not know be what people are saying. May not know be the plan of the enemy. We pray that, Father God, there be miracle, miracle, miracle in Tulsa County in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, have mercy, have mercy for the message today. Oh, we pray, Father God, whatever message we receive today, let that come from your mouth. Oh, speak to us today. Let someone be touched today. Let healing be in the place today, Father God. Transform your people today. Transform your people today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we give you praise. We glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our children. We thank you, Father God, for our spouse. We thank you, Father God, for the community. Thank God for where you are, where you live, everything. You may not like it, but thank God because it could be worse. We thank, we appreciate what you do in our life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Shall we continue to worship God? Shall we continue to magnify the name of Jesus? God is indeed good. God is indeed merciful. And his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness to us. You have done wonderful to be in God's house this morning. And I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. On behalf of our senior pastors who are not here, Reverend Dr. Trevor Grizzle, Pastor Dr. Maureen Grizzle, um, we want to um, extend welcome to everyone who are with us this morning. We have our associate um, pastor, Pastor Philemon Ash and Lady um, Kewana Ash. God bless you. We also see someone who has on a long extended vacation. Pastor Sabrina meets. Uh, welcome back. We are happy to have you in God's house. Uh, may God continue to bless you and keep you. We have seen um, Sister Zola visiting with us today. We are happy to have you in God's house. May God continue to bless and keep you. We, when we are together, we are a force to reckon with. I'm going to say that again. When we are together, we are forced to reckon with. Okay, so y'all didn't hear me. When we are together, we are forced to reckon with. Amen. 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 Together, we, strong, we are strong, we are fortified, and we are blessed. Um, the 
burden of the leadership of hope is that all people, irrespective of their racial, cultural, or ethnic background, will find a place where they truly belong as children of God. Hope is always creating a home away from home for the people of different nations resi resident in the United States who needs a place to fellowship and to serve the Lord. Our vision, serving locally and reaching globally. And if you are here Friday night, you will see a part of that local mission that we have been having. We were able to serve over 100 food to the people around the community, and it's going to come back again every Friday night. We give God praise and glory for that. And, um, of course, Pastor and Dr. Maureen Grizzle, they are over there doing the global part of it. So we give God praise that even as we speak, this vision is being realized. Amen? Our 2023 team theme, Rising to New Heights. Let me see anybody here. Who have, who, have been, who have risen to any new heights. Yes, last week we had some serious testimonies and we have seen God um, taking people to different heights. And I want you to know, you know, the Bible studies, the prayer meetings, I'm still walking in my Thursday night's victory. I'm still walking in my Wednesday night victory. I'm still walking in every time we pray and declare, I'm walking in those victories. We just don't pray and move from those space and just revisit them again. No, we walk in the victories that we believe God has done in our lives. So like you know, Friday, Thursday night, I think, or Wednesday night, we talk about, um, I think it was Wednesday night, Pastor Paulina said, write some stuff in what you want. And my wife and I, in fact, I don't know where she found those envelopes, so dumb bills. <laughs> she just dumped them in front of me. And because that's what she said, he said we we're going to do. And we're declaring that our mortgages, our loans, and everything are paid off. We are walking in that victory by faith. Amen. 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 And I just want you to know that whenever we come together to pray, it is not fallen on deaf ears. We have a sovereign God who hears all things and will um, respond in his time. Amen. All right. Our mission is to exalt the Lord through vibrant spirits-led inspired worship. Evangelize the lost through spirit-led witnesses. Educate the believers through biblical informed teaching and preaching. Equip believers for kingdom living and ministry through Christ-centered and apostolic precept and example. If you could bear with me, bear these announcements in mind. Wednesday, we are be get, we'll be gathering again for prayer. And um, God also goes on into Thursday. We are going to be having prayer meeting Wednesday night and Thursday night. If there's never a time we need to pray, it's now, church. There are so many things. I don't know if you are aware of them. Um, Sergeant Bompoku mentioned quite a bit of them in his prayer um, that is happening in locally around us. Tulsa School right now is in turmoil. And there are so many things happening globally that will affect us in some point in time. And we need to be aware of those and to present ourselves before God, that God will able to keep us. So Wednesday night, we're meeting for, um, usually it's Bible study, but we're going to pray. And pastor, when pastor gets back, he will jump back in and it's Bible study. And um, Thursday night, we're also going to be having um, a time of prayer. The women's ministry will meet um, via Zoom at 8 p.m. And those times are 8 p.m. via Zoom. If you don't have the link, see Pastor Ash, he will give you the link, all right? Um, Pastor's appreciation service, unfortunately, have to be pushed back again because of their schedule. So it is now going to be on November 12th. Um, I will say more of this at the ending of the service when we are not um, live streaming. Um, Hope Kitchen, we had a successful Hope Kitchen on Friday night. And the next night time we're going to meet is September 8th at 8 a.m. Sorry, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is not Hope Breakfast. Um, the men's, ministry, the men's Fellowship Ministry presents a men's healing night. The last time we had one, it was so refreshing. And, you know, as men, we were able to just talk freely and just pray and feel refreshing. Um, so we're having one, again, coming up on September 16th. Sergeant Mampuku, I'm sure next week we'll give you some more information and our guest speakers and all that it entails. Amen. Are you still happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Are you still happy to be in God's house? Turn to your person, sit beside you and say, it's good to see you. 
don't, don't lie now, you know. You can't turn to somebody else with that straight face and it's good to see you. It's really good to see you in God's house and we are happy that you are here. I was told we have a testimony. We have a testimony. Who is ready to testify? Who has that? Come on, Pastor. Uh, well, sorry, Brother Albert. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Gil. Hallelujah. So, uh, whatever testimony I'm going to give you as to the glory of God, God has been good. When Pastor was ministering or when he was talking, he says that whatever prayers that we pray does not go on deaf ears, right? It doesn't go on deaf ears. It means that God listens to our prayers. And he hears it. And he works according to that. So I'm, I'm just here to encourage somebody that maybe you have been praying for something for a very long time. And you've not had any results. God is listening. It's just waiting at a point in time for you to get your miracle. For you to get your healing. Whatever you are trusting God for. It doesn't matter. Bible says that with God all things are possible. So just keep trusting God. Just keep praying. And one day I say one day God is going to visit you. Amen. So my testimony goes this way. Last week, I was, <laughs> anyway, God gave me favor in the sight of one of the senators in Tulsa, sorry, in Oklahoma, in the whole of Oklahoma State, to do a presentation to a group of uh, black people. So I'm a financial advisor, so they just wanted me to educate the people on financial literacy and all those things so they can be aware of things like that. So it was a four-day event that we're supposed to have. And what happened was that the Wednesday, Wednesday night, I had an attack. And that attack, I can't remember the last time I had fever, though. I can't, to be honest with you, I can't remember. It could be the time that I was in the hospital. But I just had an attack that night. And with that attack, I was shaking with fever. I was shaking. And I was even having a pain in my knee, like unusual pain I've never experienced before. And I was like, God, what's going on? I mean, the event is just today because that was the midnight or the dawn to Thursday that we we're going to be starting the event. So I was asking myself questions. And what came to mind is this can be a form of attack to take away God, what God has purpose for me or the doors that God has for me in that very moment. So I just woke up and I was praying. I just started praying in tongues, started praying in tongues, started praying in tongues, and I woke up, walked around, went out of, the, of our bedroom, and then came back in again and started praying. I was praying, I was praying, I was praying. And to be honest with you, the fever just left. The fever just disappeared. Even though I was still feeling the pain in my knee, which I felt like I can do with it, God has given me the power, the strength to walk with it. So the following morning, I told my wife about it because she we were traveling that morning to Oklahoma City. So she was actually going to drop me at uh, downtown so I can take the bus that was taking the people to Oklahoma City. And I told my wife what had happened in the night, and she encouraged me. So when we were leaving, actually on the way, my wife went to join a prayer meeting because I told her she had some friends who were praying at that time. So they were praying with me. She told them to pray with me. So they were praying with me. They were praying with me. And to be honest with you, at those very times, I was still feeling the, 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 the pain in my knee. And that kind of disappeared as well. So throughout the whole time, I didn't have any fever. I didn't have any pain in my knee. I just want to be grateful. You know what? Our God is good. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Like, it doesn't matter what you're going through. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, even about what you can even think or imagine. God can do more than that. So just keep trusting God. Just keep putting your trust in him. It doesn't matter. Don't put your trust in man. Please, don't put your trust in man. Man is man just like you. And he may disappoint you. 
and it's, it's normal. You get it. But just put your trust in God. With God, you don't get any disappointment. He's going to take you through all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give God praise and glory. Can we just give a shout of hallelujah? hallelujah. Can we just give a shout of hallelujah? hallelujah? We are a Bible-believing, feet-stamping, hand-clapping, you can see dancing, Christian people. And when you see some of us dance, and when you see some of us shout, and when you see some of us clap, when you see some of us cry, you, don't, you may not know the story behind it. Just rejoice. Just rejoice. Because you don't know what, what, where God has been taking people from and what God has taken people through. God is indeed awesome. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite one of our youth, a young, young man that we have watched grown up in our church and become very instrumental in the ministry, I'm going to invite Nathan to come as he give us an exhortation. Could you make him feel well? Good morning, church. We're grateful to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Before I start, I'm going to give a quick word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for what you're doing. Pray for this exhortation. That will be your words and not mine. Pray that I will speak to your people and they will receive what they need to receive today. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, giving honor to God and giving honor to the leadership, Dr. Grizzles, who are not here, and Pastor Gail, Pastor Ash. Thank you for this opportunity. So today... I just have my topic, I'd say, it's just one word, very simple word. That word is rejoice. Rejoice. And so when I was asked to give this exhortation, Dr. Grizzle asked me about two weeks ago, and he's like, can you do it? He's like, basically do it the week after. So last week, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be ready. Give me, give me two weeks. Give me to the end of the month. And I'm driving home. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm starting to prepare my mind. Okay, what do you, I don't know what I'm going to speak. So I'm just driving. And I get on the highway, and then I just hear the word rejoice. And I was like, that's it. That's it. And I just smiled. I was like, this is, that's a word. And the scripture today that we're going to be reading for, we're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. So if you have your Bibles Flip with me to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I'll say it one more time. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so, looking at it, what exactly does the word rejoice mean? When we're looking at it, rejoicing in the Lord, what does that mean? Rejoicing means putting joy in the Lord's name, work, and being. Again, rejoicing means putting joy in the Lord's name, work, and being. Now, when you hear the word rejoicing, like for me, that ought to make you excited. That ought to make you celebrate the goodness of God. But sometimes in life, we don't want to rejoice. There's things that happen. I've been there where it's like, mm, why, why should I rejoice? There's nothing to rejoice about. Life is giving me problems. I have no motivation. God's, God doesn't seem like he's coming through right now. What, what's going on? Or sometimes we just let Satan just come and tear us down. And there's just, wow, I have no reason to rejoice. Like, there's no point. But even through that, even through those problems, everything that's going on in our lives, we still rejoice. The Bible says in uh, Nehemiah 
8.10, do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Life may throw its problems at you, its curveballs. Satan may come and do things that may have problems. You may not be, things may not just be coming and doing, everything's wrong, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. I don't have money to pay my bills, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm struggling with my marriage through my family. My kids aren't listening to me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm not doing well in school. I'm struggling. I'm at the point where I want to give up, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so I have three points quickly that I want to talk about, about exactly why. Why is it exactly that we rejoice in God? Why? Because sometimes we do things, and it's like there's no, we just do it. We don't have a why. Like, why do we do this? Sometimes we, we go to God, we ask for things. We ask for, like, the most ridiculous things. And God's coming to us like, why are you asking for this? We don't even think to ask, okay, do I, why am I asking God for this? When, if I go to my dad and I say, right now, dad, I need $20,000. Are you in trouble? This, did you do something? What are you needing with that money? Oh, it's maybe it's because I need to take care of my school bills. Okay, then there, there's a reason. Sometimes we go to God with no reason. We just ask God, okay, God, I need a new car. I, my car's okay, but, like, I just want a better car. That, that's not right. We rejoice. Why? Number one, why do we rejoice? We rejoice to give God honor and praise for what he did and will do. You see, sometimes we have the blessings that God gives to us. We just take it. We throw it for granted. We just take it. Take it for granted. They're just there. God blesses us with certain things. We don't even look to acknowledge him. It's like, well, God, thanks for that. Oh, here's my list. Here, you can do this. You can do that. You can do that. You can do that. But we don't even look to rejoice in the things that God has already blessed us with. Sometimes we just want more. And I, so I recently got a job, praise God for that. But, and that will be later on. I have a testimony a little bit with that. But sometimes with some people, this is what we do. I was talking, I think it was my mom, my sister, and me. And we were just talking. And we were just talking about how, like, there was a family. They're struggling and whatnot. And what my sister had mentioned one of her sister's friends. She's been looking for a job for two years. Can't find a job. I got a job in three months, even though I had to wait. But sometimes we're like, mm, I could have been like, God, this isn't the job I want. This, give me something better. But there's people out there who, they don't even have a job. That person, they've been looking two years, still no job. And I have a job. That's something to rejoice for. That's something to give honor. We have to stop taking things for granted when God blesses with things. Because he could easily take away that blessing. That blessing was made for you. But we sit, we complain. Mm, God, that, that blessing, yeah, it's great that you blessed me with that, but can, can, we, can you do a little bit better? We start asking God, can you surprise me, God? Who are we to tell God to surprise us? God is supposed to surprise us. But instead, we're telling God, hey, God, you know, that, that's okay. But can, can you up it up a little bit? Give me, give me something better. And that's not the way we should look at our blessings. We should be giving thanks and rejoicing in what we have because it, it could easily be taken away from us. Number two, we rejoice with others to celebrate what God has done, not only in our lives, but in others' lives. For me, I love to hear testimony. I love hearing about the great things that God has done in our lives and other people's lives, not just my life but hearing what God has done to others. So during our worship team practices, usually before we start, we come together and we talk, we pray. And then we always, Kwan always asks, is there anybody with testimony? Some weeks there might be testimonies and some weeks there, there isn't. But always hearing those testimonies gives me joy because here's the things about testimonies. Testimonies, they help us, but they can also give somebody else who needs strength during that week. They're important. And sometimes we also take for granted testimonies. Sometimes we look at life, it's like, man, imagine if life was just 
Like, I remember I was having a conversation with a friend, and we were just like, imagine if life was just perfect. Like, we didn't have to ask God for anything. God just gave us everything. Like, there would be no reason to even rejoice. There would be no reason to celebrate. There would be no testimonies of the great things God did, because just everybody's just receiving. Oh, I got this, I got this. Oh, what about you? Oh, I also got this, 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 and this. We wouldn't even have a reason to rejoice. But testimonies are meant to boost us up in our times of struggle when we don't have it. But here's the thing about rejoicing with others. There's this thing we have to watch out for. It's called envy. Because here's the thing. In life, sometimes when we're not receiving what we need and somebody else is receiving what they need, sometimes our heart changes. And we're like, man, God, how does that person has that and I don't? And we start to get frustrated. We start to get frustrated with people. Oh, you may hear a testimony and it comes up to you. Oh, how you, what's, what's wrong? You may look like you know in your heart you're upset. Be like, oh, it, it's nothing, you know. Or sometimes this is what we'll do. We'll rejoice in people's downfall, meaning we'll rejoice and want people's, you know, failures and whatnot. That's not how we rejoice. And then when things actually, like, you hear somebody, they're going through something, we celebrate those things. It's like our worst enemy. We'll look at it. Everything's just falling down. We're like, yes. I just don't like to see that person's success. That's not what we do around here. That's not what Jesus would have wanted us to do. We're called to rejoice together, to celebrate one another. Because through that, through celebrating one another, like I said, there's just something about it that it'll boost your faith when you hear another person's testimony. Like I've had situations where I've heard other people's testimonies of the goodness of God that they had, and it's boosted me. Or seeing people like, for me, one of the biggest things that motivated me in college was seeing people graduate. In high school was the same thing. Seeing my friends graduate, that boosted me like, okay, if they graduated, then I can do it. I can push through the pain. I can get this thing done. We should have that same mentality. When we hear the good things that are happening in other people's lives, we can't sit and just be like, wow, look at them. You know, great things are happening, but God, hey, what about me? Nothing's happening in my life. Why should I rejoice in their life? They should feel what I'm feeling. No, we should still celebrate in other people's success. Because, you know, at the end of the day, God is going to do something for you. It may not, for some people, for me, my friends, some people, they got jobs right away. I took, it took me three months to find a job. But I still celebrated with my friends that got a job. My siblings, they were looking for summer jobs this summer. They got jobs before me. I could have been like, wow, God, just, you're, you're going to give them a job? They're not even... They don't have their life together yet. Like, they're still working through high school. They still got a lot left. I'm here. I finished. But I'm sitting, waiting. I'm at home. They're making their money. They got, they got the nice shoes and everything. They're buying their nice stuff for back to school. And I don't have no job. But I didn't do that. I celebrated with them when they got, when I heard that they got a job, I celebrated with them. And my final point is rejoicing in the Lord gives us a sense of peace. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you, I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled and neither let them be afraid. There's just something about that word, peace. And I'm not talking about the peace of the world because sometimes we may look to the world As our peace, we have so many different means that we need to find peace. For some people, it's meditating and doing all these different things. And I'm not saying that some of those things are wrong. Like, there's some things in the world that that can help you with peace. But I'm not talking about that peace. I'm talking about the peace of Jesus. The peace that you can come in and know that through everything, it is well. The peace that you will prevail, that... God is going to give you the strength that you need in your situation. That's the peace I'm talking about. And we can rejoice in that. I could have sat and just 
been sad all day, not thinking like I had a job. But there was a peace that, okay, God, I may not have a job right now, but I know you provide. Because I've seen you do it for others, and I know you can do the same thing for me. That peace that just calms you. It's, I'm telling it's like nothing else compared to the world, what the world gives. And so I'm going to end with a testimony. And I, like I said earlier, I received a job about two, three weeks ago. And I remember I was talking with my mom. And she told me that she was going to tell me something that God told her, but she wasn't going to tell me until after. And so the other day, after I finally got my job, she told me, and she said, this is the thing that God told me. Back at, in May, my graduation party, she said, there's going to be a connection that you're going to receive through that job. And I, and I found out about this a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago. And I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, God, I'm glad that my mom didn't tell me this until now because I would have been stressing, okay, God, looking at who's at my party. Okay, who's the connection? Is it my dad? Because I have a connection with him. I can go work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer. Is it my friend Joe? I can go back and be a graduate assistant. Is it this person? Is it that person? That would have caused just a whole bunch of stress. But my mom waited to tell me until the end. And... So I started the process by doing an interview with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, so through my dad, and I interviewed with his boss, and I had my first interview. Went great. Everything's going good. I was supposed to do a second interview. I go in there. Boom. They tell me. I was supposed to actually meet with his boss and two of the other supervisors to look potentially at some different departments. Oh, they, my dad goes to his boss's office. They tell him. The other two, one of the bosses or something, they're not there. They're working from home. I guess it was a mix-up. And I'm, when I, when I found out the news, I was disappointed. I mean, I'm ready to interview. This is the second interview. But, you know, I get sent home. I was like, okay. I could drive home. I was a little sad. But then I was like, okay, God, you know, I still have hope because I have another interview. They postponed it. So they postponed it to, like, July 6th so because I had camp. So I was supposed to leave for two weeks. Okay. God, I'm trusting you. You're going to provide a job, wherever it may be. Your will be done. I'm still praying that. I'm still having hope throughout all this. I'm not giving up. I have my battles. I go to camp. Camp goes well. July 6th, or I think the 4th of July happens. July 5th, my dad gets a text from his boss. Can't do the interview. He's got some family stuff going on. Man. Opportunity, again, don't have an interview. Okay, well, God, I don't know what you're doing. But again, I'm going to trust you. Maybe they're going to push the interview back again. Maybe I'm going to have another chance. And I remember even throughout all this, another thing my dad told me is he had a dream that there was a roadblock. We were, I was with him, and we were trying to go up the hill, but there was a, something blocking us. And he had to get out of the car and, you know, push the car and whatnot to get us up the hill to climb that roadblock. And... After that, I remember he was praying, and the Holy Spirit told him to talk to Pastor Ash about his job, what he does. And so I applied with his job, but I was, in a, I was applying in a different position, not what Pastor Ash does. So I applied for that position. I get an email back, hey, we want you to do this questionnaire. We're interested and whatnot. I do that. Okay, next, I think a week later, we have canceled this position. Okay. Wow. But for some reason, I was like, okay, I felt like don't give up on that. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to reapply for that same position because they had that same position open for three opportunities. So I applied again, that same position. They don't, I email, hey, your application's been received, da, 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 da. I find out, I go back on the website, that position's been canceled. They didn't even email me. I'm like, what's going on here? I'm like, okay, I'm going to apply again. Same position, again. They emailed me, hey, you know, we saw that you applied. We already have your questionnaire. We'll be looking to contact you again. Third time, position removed from the website. No email whatsoever. So I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not even looking to the organization no more. Done. And I remember my dad, he had also, he mentioned, I think a day later, he mentions, oh, Pastor Ash sends this other thing. I said, no, I'm not applying to that organization again. They haven't emailed me back. I've got nothing. But even through that, 
I still rejoice. I was praying. I'm praying to God. I'm talking to God. God, I'm still believing for this job. Because I had also another opportunity to go back to school. I would have been a graduate assistant. And I was like, God, I know I'm not called there. I know I'm not. But I know you're going to come through for me and provide. And so I told, I told my dad, hey, I'm not going to apply again. So he tells Pastor Ash, you know, he's done. He's going to look elsewhere. But Pastor Ash, for some reason, and I know it was, it, this was God. This is, it has to be God and only God. He tells my dad, tell him, just one, do it one more try. This is, now this is a different position. And I was like, well, I mean, it's not going to hurt to try again. And so I try again with this position. 24 hours later, hey, we want to get you in for an interview. I was like, well, okay. I mean, that's quick. Like, Great. I do the interview. God is good. I get the job. But I'm saying this testimony to give somebody strength, to give, encourage somebody. God doesn't always work on our time. I remember when I, and one of the craziest things, too, is this all started after I preached my first message. And I knew from the start that God was testing me. I knew, I was like, I could feel it. I was like, yeah, God's testing me on my faith. And it was after, I remember one of the key points I gave in my sermon was rising to new heights brings, or you have to have patience. And that kept coming in my head. I was like, okay, God, I, I see what you're doing. I know you're testing me. And I know I prevailed on this. But there's still going to be times I'm going to struggle. But today I just want to encourage somebody. Rejoice. Doesn't matter what you're going through. You may be feeling hurt. You may be feeling down. You may be feeling let down by other people. But rejoice. And for some, I can't, for some reason, I, this is, I feel like God has been really pushing me to do that. I really didn't want to do this. But I feel like God, we need to do this. But I want us to stand. We need to do some, like, rejoicing. So can, can we just give a, give a shout of praise to God? A shout of praise. We need to do some rejoicing here today. Give God glory today for what he's done in your life. Rejoice. Can we rejoice today? Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you for being glorious, God. Thank you for your honoring. I feel like somebody, somebody, you haven't rejoiced in a while. Can, can, we, can we get some African praise or something? But somebody needs to do a dance. Somebody needs to have that breakthrough. Somebody needs a praise today. So on the count of three, I want you to give your best praise to the Lord. Come on, somebody. One, two, three, give a praise to God. Jesus, matter what we're going through, through the pain, through the suffering, when we feel like we have no hope, we will look to you and simply just rejoice. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us, and we just praise you, and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. If you know where this young man is coming from, if you know what, where this young man is coming from, 
you would rejoice in that's enough for us to rejoice this morning just watching his growth just watching his development just watching God using him just watching him being successful through college just watching him getting his job the link I know who my link is amen um we give God praise and glory we give God praise and glory and you know we could sit all day and just listen to him and what God is doing in his life we continue to pray for him and all the young people of our church at this time, I'm going to invite the praise team to come, and we're going to do the offering and tithes and offering. Hallelujah. Let us rise on our feet as we are in the rejoicing season. Stand on our feet as we give our offerings and tithes to the Lord this morning. We're going to sing the song, I am a warrior, a Christian warrior, with the weapon in my right hand. And I ensure that I brought my weapon because I want you to know that the weapon that you have is mighty and powerful. What has happened in this book and what you are going through, we can go through it because God helped us. So let us sing and worship together. Yeah. 
We are marching in the name of the Lord. Let's march forward. Let's march forward for God. And fight. Fight like soldier. Are you a soldier? Don't give up. Don't give in. God has an army and he has to win. Set on the vision as an evil sword. Fighting. Fighting against the church. What we gonna do? Pull out your armor. armor. Pull out your sword. We are marching in the name of the Lord. warrior. Warrior. Hey. Warrior. Oh. Warrior. 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 Hey. testimony. I, my life, is a testimony. My life is dedicated to God. I will praise him without excuse. David is my brother. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, today, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for the tithes, oh God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that it is blessed. It is blessed. The people that give, their pockets are blessed. In the name of Jesus. And you, oh God, are honoring them for their sacrifices this morning, this afternoon. So we thank you that we are alive. We thank you that we have a job. We thank you that we can give. And we ask that this offering will be used to um, build your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. May I invite you to keep standing, keep standing. Um, at this time, we have come to uh, another junction where we'll hear from our speaker today. I'm going to invite none other than my brother, our beloved, Pastor Philemon Ash to come to bring the word of God. Keep standing as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, your servants stand before you, Lord. We stand as an oracle of you, as a channel of you, Lord. We pray, God, that your anointing will be upon him from the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. I pray, God, that you will give him authority to speak your word, Lord Jesus. And as we speak, God, we pray for receptive hearts, for those of us who will be receiving it, that these words will find root in our hearts, Lord, and bring changes. Cover it now under your blood. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Drawing near to that time, huh? Oh, but thank God for his love and his goodness towards us. Oh, God is here. God is here. God is here. And I thank him for manifesting his goodness today. I try my best not to take up too much of the time. I ain't making any promises. I'm telling you. I'm just going to try my best, okay? Um, as the word of God is being read, I would ask that you stand. It's uh, taken from Hebrews 11. I'm going to read the first two verses, then jump all the way down to verse 32 unto the end. It reads, now faith is the substance of things, things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, 
and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scorchings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having promised some better thing for them, that they without us should not be made perfect. Take a moment and just turn around. Just behold those that are standing around you. Just take a moment to do that. And then I want you to just fix your eyes squared on someone and say to them, you are not alone. Speak it as though you, your, ver you, your very self, you're convinced of what you're saying. You are not alone. And then you may have your seat. Thank you very much. We've read a very familiar portion of scripture here. And it tells the story or, or stories of men and women of old that conquered and received victories and successes because they relied or kept their focus upon God. You see, these are the voices of our ancestors today speaking to us about how they overcame. Last week and today, we, we heard testimonies. And like Nathan said, and my wife would say, I'm, I'm always excited about testimonies because I know I serve a living God. And I always want to be reminded that God is showing himself strong in your lives. And when we read the book of Hebrews 11, we hear the words of men and women that trusted and depended on God and God came through for them and their voices are ringing loud but the reality is is that we are living in a time where there are so many voices screaming in our ears that often we forget about the voice of our ancestors the voice of our, our ancestors are dimmed they are silenced because of the noise of the present time that we're in. People that are crying out and saying that God is dead. People that are projecting voices and words of intimidation to us to believe that we cannot trust God again as our ancestors did. But I'm here to remind us today that you are not alone. Where you stand today, whatever you are believing God for, you are not a place that you're alone that no one has encountered it before. And as you are standing not alone, may I remind you today, Hebrews 12, which is really the verse that I want to present to us here. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Considering that you're not alone, beholding the cloud of witnesses, the voice of our ancestors that are crying out to us. God encourages us here to lay aside every weight. Tell your neighbor, every weight. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. 
And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You see, the goal of entering a race is to complete it. Amen? Whether you strive to come first, second, third, or perhaps last, the goal in the race is to complete it. And the Bible compares the Christian journey to that of a race, not a sprint. So you don't bolt off and try to finish first. But it's a race that requires everyone who has enlisted in it to complete it. It's not a 400 meter. It's not a dash and go. The believer's goal is to make it to the end. In order to ensure that we complete the race, the Bible invites the believer to do three things, which is what I'm going to base my word here today to you on. Three things. There's a preparatory phase that the believer must go through. Preparation. Last few Sundays, we would have heard Dr. Grizzle speaking about the soil and the seed and how important it is for the ground to be ready to receive the seed. Similarly, everyone who is enlisted in taking part in a race must prepare themselves. Must. And the Bible declares that we prepare ourselves by laying aside every weight. Laying aside every weight. Now, you read the King James Version, it's easy to miss what the verse is saying. Reading the verse in the literal translation says, having laid aside, having laid aside every weight. It means then, before you can think of running, you have to prepare yourself by laying aside every weight. It's in a past tense. So you are called to lay aside every weight. And you might ask the question, what type of weight are you referring to? Nathan, in his exhortation, mentioned one of them. I'm just going to be bolting through a few. First Peter 2 and verse 1 instructs the believer to lay aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies and envies. And all evil speakings. Notice carefully, the verse renders it as all. They are in the plural form, and it has all. Lay aside all. But what is malice? Malice is to speak an ill will or desire. To speak, or malice speaks of an ill will or desire to see someone hurt. Now, the Bible does not address that if it's that the person did you something or the person is your enemy, so you're trying to have malice towards them. The Bible just commands that lay aside all. Lay aside all. So whether you have been an offender, offended by someone, or it's towards your enemy, the Bible commands us to lay aside all malice. It is a weight. Deceit. It's an act of using trickery to lure someone away by their own greed. So you're working in a business place and every moment you turn your back, your lunch that you brought, placed it in the fridge, someone's eating it out. And you start, you know what, I'm going to pour some Maalox into that or some, something that would give them diary. So you said, you know what, I'm preparing this nice food and it smells really good and I'm putting it in a beautiful package. Deceit. Your intent is to lure someone away by their own greed. The Bible says put that away. Hypocrisies. It talks about someone acting under a mask. Someone who's stage playing. An actor, an actress. Someone with a facade. What you see is not really who they are. And Jesus calls the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees hypocrites because what? They speak one thing, but they live a different life. And the Bible is saying that, listen, you're not a bipolar person. 
put away that type of character. One face. What you see home should be shown outside. Hypocrisies. Envies. It's, and I love how this person defines it. It says, it's the miserable trait of being glad when someone experiences misfortune or pain. It's a miserable trait. And my, my wife gave me a scolding this morning. She said, don't call my name in your sermon. <laughs> so I won't. <laughs> it conveys displeasure at one's good. You're rejoicing when someone else experiences pain or hardship. It's not good. And the last thing according to 1 Peter 2, evil speakings. In, in other words, backbiting. You're trying to defame someone's character. The Bible says to put all those away. Put them away. So wait, and this list is not exhaustive, okay? The list goes on. But in order for you to run successfully and complete the race, the Bible is calling us to lay aside. Throw these things off. Because they are going to inhibit your success. They are going to prevent you from completing that which you have been enlisted to. You know, the, 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 the shocking thing about our approach to scripture is that when we come across these verses, we often think of the sinner man. We don't see us as possessing these characters. But the word of God wasn't written, especially 1 Peter 2 here, it wasn't written to the unsaved, but to the saved. Those who have been or should have been redeemed. And there is a call to put these things away. And when we run back over to Hebrews 12, it says, put aside all weight, comma, and the sin. And the sin, which is so easily besetting us. You know what that sin is? Is the sin of doubt. And some of you may not have considered doubting to be a sin. But let's jump back over to Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Someone find that and read that aloud for me. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. The Bible race. No one there yet? Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Yes, you're going right. For he too. But without faith, one cannot please God. In other words, what is the inverse of faith it's doubt it's disbelief and the bible is saying if you have disbelief you cannot please god and chapter 12 verse 1 renders disbelief or doubt to be a sin you see our ancestors access that which they desired of god that which they were pursuing because they believed god they believed god without doubting but often when we traverse through this life, and let me paint an analogy of a, a runner as Hebrews 12 does. Just imagine for a moment that there is a runner who's enlisted in a 50K marathon. And he's running and of course he does the preparation that is needed before embarking on such a journey. He hydrates himself. But as he runs and as he progresses on this journey, there will be moments that he would require water, a drink. And we understand that those of you who are familiar with, with races, 
that along the journey there are specific positions where there would be individuals standing by with water that would offer it to those that are passing by. Just imagine for a moment that there is this athlete who is running this 50K. And at 10,000 meters in running, he realizes that he is in need of some water. Therefore, his anticipation would be, there would be someone on the journey that I can get some water from. But just imagine for a moment that as he's running and he hits the 11,000 marker and the 12,000 marker and there is no one standing there to offer him any water. And he hits the 15 and the 16 and 17 and still no one is there. Should this person then give up? Because what he desired and expected is not there. There is a similar reality with us on our Christian journey. That as we go through this life, we encounter areas and points of need. And we believe God, that God, when I make this bend, I'm believing that around that corner, you're going to be there to supply and provide for me. But as we turn that corner and we realize, God, you're not here. The provision that I needed has not been met. And then we take another bend and we say, God, I'm believing you. That when I turn that corner, maybe you haven't done it before, but you're going to do it this time. And we keep hope alive. But after one and two times, three times, say, you know what? God, you have forgotten me. So I'm going to drop out of this race. May I remind you of Daniel? We know Daniel, those of you who attended Sunday school, to be a man who prays three times a day or who prayed three times a day. The Bible declares that there was a time that Daniel besought the Lord. Praying for God to answer. And for 21 days, we understand that his prayers were withheld. Or the answer to his prayers were withheld. We can calculate those three times a day that Daniel prayed by 21 days. To be 63 times Daniel may have prayed about this specific matter. Without having his answer. 63 times. I'm wondering how many times have we besought the Lord on one matter. It is easy for us to give up and lose heart after three times. Maybe four or five times. You say, Lord, I've been asking you. I've been crying out. And I'm not seeing the light that is said to be at the end of this tunnel. So I want to give up. You see, our ancestors, they encountered hiccups as well. May I tell you of Abraham. The Lord called him from a place, his father's mother's, his place of comfort. And said, Abraham, rise up, go out and let me lead you to a place. And I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Abraham turned to God and said, God, you really behold me? I have no child. God said, nevertheless, trust me. And as Abraham traversed life, Abraham looked into the bucket of water, realizing that his face that was once the looks of a baby's bottom has now turned. And I'm getting old. And then he looks around and he beheld his wife who is running fast behind him, wrinkling. And Abraham's faith was tried. And Abraham turned to God and said, God, what about the promise you made to me? He held on believing. Even when the opportunity seemed right. To give up. Old age. It seemed perfect. He said, God, well, this was just my imaginations. 
I'm going crazy. I, I, I did not hear you. Perfect opportunity to give up. Abraham kept trusting God. His faith, believing God that that which he has spoken will come to pass. We have our similar burdens, our cares that we are believing God for. And I'm saying to you, maybe it has taken a while. Maybe you've been in that position like the man sitting by the pool of, of Siloam, waiting for the water to be troubled. For many years, waiting. I don't know where you are or where you desire to be, how long it's been there. But I'm here to remind you today that they who put their trust in God shall never be disappointed. That's the preparation phase. So it asks us to lay aside all weight and the easily besetting sin of doubt. Cannot please God if you have doubt. Then there is the ongoing phase where the scripture commands the believer to run. 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 But the scripture specified a manner in which we are called to run, isn't it? It says, run with patience. Run with patience. The word here for patience, this might mean nothing to you all, but I'm going to say it anyway. Hupo mone. H-U, those of you who want to take notes. H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. Hupo mone. It means to endure under. To endure under. God is calling you to run. But run enduring under. It connotes an idea that as you run, there will be challenges. There will be obstacles. There will be pressures that you are confronted with that is saying to you, give up. But the word of God is saying, remain under it and run. A synonym for this word is constancy. Being constant. In other words, you're not looking back. Remember Lot's wife. Your focus is on what I'm going on. So even if at the 15,000 marker there is no water, God, I'm continuing. Even at the 20,000 marker, there is no water. God, I'm continuing. I'm going on because he who has called is faithful. Is faithful. So we are called to run, to endure on the be constant. I'm running ahead. The other thing that we are called to do during is to keep a steady Focus. Keep a steady focus. Those of you who have ever embarked in running, be it a sprint, a marathon, a relay, whatever it is, you will know that while running, there's always two types of people in the audience. Those that are cheering you and those that are hoping that you'll just fall and drop out. Two types of people. And it's so easy to be distracted by the voices of those that wants us to fall. So easy. Someone just needs to say one dirty word at us. And that sticks in our mind. And it slows us down. And it causes us to lose focus of what we are really called to do. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus... Keeping a steady focus. Not looking to the left or right or listening to the naysayers. The Sanballats and the Tobias. Not turning an ear to paying attention to what they have to say. But fixing our focus upon Jesus. 
The goal of the race is to complete it. And the Bible declares that if our eyes are focused on he who is at the end, then our success in this race is guaranteed. Keeping a steady focus. For he who has called is faithful. Some of you not paying attention. He says, looking unto Jesus who is the author, the beginning and the end of our faith. Your race is a race of faith. And Jesus is the one who has initiated it. And he is the one who is standing at the end to complete it. The Bible tells the picture of him. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You see, often as we go through this life, our focus is not so much on the thereafter. But we focus so much on the now. That we are crippled and made paralyzed by what we see happening around us in the now. Jesus looked ahead. The Bible declares for the joy that was set before him, the joy that was ahead of him, he endured the cross. He despised the shame. He took on all that came his way because he understood there is an end goal. When we listen to the voice of our ancestors, the Bible declares that some of them chose not victories now because they looked ahead of what lied in front of them. And their focus was on the life that is to come. And they endured the sufferings, the pain, the hardship. Maybe for some of us, what we are believing God for will not be a guarantee. But it is no excuse for you to throw your faith in and do not trust and believe God. It is just for a moment that you would take whatever pressure is thrown at you and make roadblocks with it. Not roadblocks, but roadblocks. In other words, put them together and pave a pathway to move ahead. Because whatever God has intended for you, whatever God has intended for you, with faith, you shall receive. Let me repeat that again. Whatsoever God had intended for you, with faith, you shall receive. The Bible is calling us here to listen to the voice of our ancestors. Because they overcame. They obtained victories. They saw what they believed in God to come to pass. And my encouragement to you today is to keep your focus upon him who has called you to run. Keep your focus upon him. And I know for some of us, we are confronted with some serious voices. That are drowned in the promises that God has made. My goal was to remind you of what God has said. But I also want to pray for you. Nothing gives me greater joy than seeing a brother or a sister in Christ attain success. I'm willing to lift you above my head. You hear me? I'm willing to lift you above my head. That that which you desire of God, you shall see it come to pass. That I will rejoice with you. And whatsoever it is you're going through now, I want to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you your business. I'm just going to stand in the gap and pray for you. Come to the front. Whatsoever you're believing God for, whatsoever you're desiring God for, it's time to activate that faith today. And see it come to pass. I was just about to do the benediction because I'm not, not about prolonging something that you really desire of God. 
some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire. We all have different magnitudes of, of, of our faith being tested and tried. But all of us can make it through the blood, through Jesus Christ. And whatever you desire of God right now, just begin to remind God. Remind Him today. That as I pray, the portals of heaven be open today. That whatsoever has been delayed, the Lord is causing the atmosphere to shift in your favor. And the walls that are standing in your way to be broken down. Today is a day of victory. Today is a day that the Lord shall make your enemies your footstools. Today is the day that the Lord is taking you into your promised lands to un unveil that which has been hidden. Come, Pastor Gil, stand behind. Come, Pastor Sabrina. Come, stand. Come, Sister Kiwana. Stand behind these people with me today. And just begin to talk to God. Talk to God. Those of you who are here, talk to God. Talk to him as a father. Talk to him as a father that says, I love you with an everlasting love. I love you with an everlasting love. Today I was reminded of 1 Corinthians that says that our eyes cannot see nor our ears can comprehend what the Lord has in store for them that believe. You do not know, you cannot come to imagine the love and the grace that the Lord has for you. It's beyond imagination and today all you need is those keys of faith to access that which he has purpose for you. So lift your hands today. Say apply the oil today. Listen, faith is the key that opens the doors. Faith. All things are possible to them that believe. You got to believe today. As I believe with you and as I pray with you and for you. Today there is an opening, there is an opening, there is an opening. Atmosphere shift, atmosphere shift, atmosphere shift in the name of Jesus. Atmosphere shift, atmosphere shift, shift, shift in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we trust in your promises today. And we thank you, O oh God, for reminding us through your word that victories are won in faith to them that believe, to them that trust in you, to them whose hope is fixed upon you. And Father, today for these people that are standing before you, O oh God, their faith, O oh God, as they are confessing today with their act of coming to the altar, their faith, O oh God, that is tried, that is tried today. I pray, O oh God. God, that you would stir within them, oh God, hope to believe, hope to trust, hope to hold on to your promises that you have called them, is faithful to complete, oh God, Lord, that which you have spoken. So I break the backs, oh God, of the enemy that has been assigned unto them. The whispering voices, I silence them today. And I pray, oh God, that the voice of our ancestors of faith will ring loudly within their ears to remind them, oh God, Lord, of the victories that have been won by those who put their trust and their faith in you, oh God. So I pray today, oh God, for those that are needing their faith to rise higher. May you, oh God, remind them of your promises. May you remind them of the times past where you have brought them victories and breakthroughs, oh God, no matter how small it may have been. Today I speak faith inspired within them, oh God, that as we have celebrated now two weeks of testifying about your goodness, in the days to come we shall tell them more of what you have done, oh God. So I speak, oh God, to their freedom. Breathe your breath of freedom upon their lives 
oh God, we call forth their promises today. And we declare, oh God, Lord, that whatsoever stands in their way, be thou removed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. May their trust in you be like never before. And Father, we release your favor today upon them, over their minds, over their minds, over their minds. Only your voice they shall hear to remind them, oh God, Lord, of your promise, of your power, of your will in their lives, in their days ahead, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord even now. Thank the Lord. No, no, no. I want you to open your mouth and thank the Lord. This is the moment that you're exercising your faith. You say, God, I'm seeing it coming to pass. So I'm thanking you now. Come on. Let those spiritual eyes be open to see, to believe, and thank the Lord right now that he is doing it. In Jesus' name. Faith to believe. So, Lord, we give you thanks. For your promises, they are yea and amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I heard your return in this week. Tomorrow, we want to pray. Traveling mercies. It's you and your son. Okay, stand together. Come on. Hold the hand. Hold each other's hand. Thank you. You know, she came here and... She was very much involved in, in, in our soup kitchen. She was present on Friday. Just a visitor, but she put her hands to work. And, and today, Father, I want to pray that you would reward her for the work, her willingness. That she, oh God, Lord, have planted seeds, oh Lord, into your kingdom. And I pray, oh God, today that you would bless them bountifully. We pray for traveling mercies by land, by air, oh God, Lord. Whatsoever it would take to get them home safely by your grace, we speak over their lives today. I pray, oh God, that your promises be imparted upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, they are blessed in their going out and in their coming in. They shall return home, oh God, Lord, with greater works, oh God. Great Greater testimonies of what you have done in their lives, oh God, Lord. So we speak, oh God, Lord, protection, favor, mercies, oh God, Lord, to keep them in all their ways, oh God. Thank you for the time that they have spent here in your house doing your work. May you, oh Lord, who rewards those who work for you, reward them faithfully, bountifully. In Jesus' mighty name, with thanksgiving, amen, amen. May God's word take root in your lives. And don't give up. You hear me? Don't give up. Don't give up. Heaven awaits the day 